Okay guys, it's day three, and um, like I said, uh, Okinawa does not have a train or subway, but it does have a monorail line. It's really tiny, it's only about little two little trains that come through, but it's a little bit of transportation, but you're going to have to be in the heart of downtown to use it. So we're waiting for that right now, we're headed out to Shuri. Joe, that's Shuri Castle today, and I'm gonna get you some footage of. The okay, so here's a map of the place that we're going to today. Right there in the middle. Let me get up close to it. Right here is Shuri Joe. Okay, and we're gonna be winding our way through these different pathways and passages to get there. Got a little bit of directions here, some of it's in English for those of you who come to visit and want to read it in English. Okay guys, this is Kankaiman Entrance and it actually is a word that translates into uh, to greet with joy. And this is the entrance to the beginning pathways that get us to Shurijo. And take a look at these gates here. Um, it said before uh, the Showa era, they actually used to have what was called Rokoka, and that actually meant water clock. And they would put giant water containers above these turrets here, and they would use the dripping of the water from the giant water units to measure time. And that's how they did it back then. So there's a little restaurant, or I should say tea house, connected to the castle, and we go ahead. We went ahead and we stopped in there, and you can see they've got some special little sweets here. These are traditional sweets. Um, this one right here is called the Hanaboro, this one right here. And it's kind of just egg yolk, sugar, flour, uh, and cut into kind of a strange dough that's fried. And uh, this was often enjoyed in the, uh, what era, the, the Edo and uh, Tokugawa times. And here this So pretty much here's a tiny model of what it would have looked like. Here's how people would line up in the rows in front. And there's where ceremonies would take place. That's the part we were just inside of right there. And right now we're inside this part right over here. We also took you through a tour of this part over here. They all connect. And right over here was where we were in the tea restaurant. Pretty amazing little model. Okay guys, that's uh, Shuri Castle right there, Shuri Joe. Pretty amazing stuff, huh? Pretty nice. I'd have to say, definitely one of the best castles I've been to since I've been in Japan uh, for the past three years. Definitely come check that out if you get to Okinawa. Okay guys, what we're about to go into here is actual caves that um, Japanese soldiers uh, hid away in uh, during an attack launched on Okinawa Island. And it's actually, you can see right behind me back there, right back here, um, the tunnels begin. And there's even a little map right over here to show us what parts we'll be going through. So let's go in there and take a look together, see a bit of history. So 
here's a room where uh, they actually sent out Morse code signals. And you can see it. it's through just a tiny, tiny little cave here. I actually have to duck to go through this. Now we're going into the operations room. And again, it's a tiny little cave here. You can see these were not big rooms. Here's a little picture of what it used to look like. And you can see the quarters were tight. Down here, a lot of electrical wiring was installed during that time. And if we go down farther here, we can see the base. This is really steep and goes down really far here. You can see everything's been taken out now, but... Oh, the leaders committed suicide in this room? Oh, wow. It's right here. Oh, that's why it says, it says, wall riddled with hand grenade when committed suicide. Wow. And these are actually the marks of the pieces of fragments that hit the walls when people committed suicide here. Pretty grim. Right here you're seeing all that remains of what was a medical room. You can see they have kind of a picture drawn here. I don't know if you can make it out well. But pretty much you had people huddled up in a tiny little dirt floor room. Right here was a petty officer's room, which is just pretty much a tiny Right here is the exit that um, a lot of the soldiers finally exited when American troops stormed the island. And this is where they made their final stand, and there's an artist rendering right here. And you can see they weren't even properly armed. All they had left at this point were sticks with uh, sometimes just railroad ties sharpened down to a point and they were even known as the stick soldiers and they said the Americans actually stormed and bombed and uh, tore up this island so bad that they called it the metal typhoon pretty intense Right outside is a large monument you can see here. It goes up pretty high. And this is actually dedicated to uh, Vice Admiral Minoru Ota, and he was the commanding officer of the Japanese Navy. And uh, him and this area. And they say there's still a poem engraved in the wall that is somewhat legible and you can still see. Let's take a look up here. You can see there's been fruits dedicated here. And this was some of the events that happened, some of the people who died. And you can get a better look at it one more time here. That's the monument. So let me give you a little bit of history from some of the stuff you saw today because uh, there was quite a bit of history behind what we looked at. Before this was actually called Okinawa, it was called Ryukyu Island and it was actually its own country and it was first attacked by the Japanese and the Japanese took over the island and um, it became part of Japan after that. Uh, later there was the golden age of trade and that pretty much turned this island into a hub um, for trades from Korea, China, and other small Asian countries close by at the time. And then later again, when it was attacked during World War II by America, um, what you had was America actually took it over 
and only the US dollar was used here um, up until about 1972 and finally it switched back to control of Japan and now yen's used here again but there's still places you can use the American dollar here till this day um, so there's a lot of history behind this island and the Okinawan people have had to deal with a lot of strife through the ages as you can tell